Hi there, and welcome to St. Saviour's Anglican Church, Kaitaia. Welcome to this, the second Sunday in Advent. Um, that's the 5th of December, 2021. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us uh, for our service today. And as you um, you are probably aware if you watched last week's, but I'll just recap uh, very quickly. Um, Advent, Advent uh, means coming or arrival. And the focus of the season of Advent is a celebration of the birth of Jesus and his first coming and the anticipation and excitement um, that, there, that there is in our hearts and in our lives for his return and his second coming. And Advent is uh, far more than just marking an event that happened uh, 2,000 years ago. We believe that God is um, among us, walks with us, is with us here today, um, that Jesus uh, was, was God in the flesh, incarnate among us and um, in the sending of the Holy Spirit God is, is with us as in our lives and our hearts and in the, the air that we breathe here alive uh, with us and through us today. And during the time of Advent the four Sundays <coughs> excuse me leading up to Christmas Day um, we we take time to pause and we remember um, the history uh, uh, of God among his people and we reflect on the promises and the prophecies of the Old Testament and how they were fulfilled in and through the life of Jesus. We reflect on the past so that we begin to better understand um, the present, uh, where we are today, and the future, our own future, and the future of the world and the future of, of all creation. And we celebrate the, the truth about God, the revelation of God uh, in Jesus by which all things, all the world, all creation will be reconciled to God. Over the, um, the weekends of, of Advent heading into Christmas Day, we uh, light candles. Last week we lit the candle of, of hope. Today we light the candle of love. Um, next Sunday we light the candle of joy. After that, the candle of peace. And on um, Christmas Eve, when we have our Midnight Eucharist here, at St. Saviour's at 10.30, we light the candle, uh, the Christ candle, the white candle, uh, to signify the light of Christ coming into the world. Let us begin. Grace and peace to you from God. God fill you with truth and joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the teaching of Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Spirit of God, 
search our hearts. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith and are themselves forgiving. So in a time of silence, we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and so be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Let us pray the collect together. Stir up your power, O God, and with your great might come to our aid, so that where our sins impede us, the help of your grace may swiftly deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who is alive with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Gospel. The Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at chapter 3, verse 1. Praise and glory to God. In the 15th year of the region of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Euteria and Traconitus, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him, every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word. What we find in this particular point in history is that Israel has lost all hope. Um, having suffered centuries of oppression and slavery, uh, the people have, have now uh, carry with them, live in a, a real sense of, of darkness uh, and despair. And this deep sense of, of darkness and despair uh, raises big questions for them about their future and, and also about their relationship with God. I mentioned last week that, um, and I think it's worth mentioning again, that hope is really essential uh, for life. Hope is, is so integral to who we are that when hope uh, isn't in our lives, isn't present, um, something key to us, some, some, the essence of who we are seems to, to disappear. And without hope, without that essence of life, Life can get very lonely and dark and, and desperate at times. And the Christmas story is, is the story of hope. It's how the, the very same God who created all things, who created the universe and, and everything in it, he enters the world himself. And he intervenes in the mess of, of the world, in the mess of it all, to give us a, a lifeline. He sends us a message that things can change. And God sends this message uh, as, as a spark, a spark of hope, um, a spark of hope that can allow us to see that change can happen, that we can walk away from things that haven't been great in our lives, that have caused us pain, things that we have done that we're not proud of. We can walk away from all those things and step into a newness, a new shape of life, and a new way of being. And the reason that God makes this move towards us 
is in for the sake of love, is in the name of love. God is love. God loves us unconditionally. His whole motivation uh, towards humanity, towards you and I, um, is, is because he loves us. God's whole movement is in the name of love. He sends his son because he loves us. He sends Jesus um, so that we can know his love. Jesus opens up a way uh, to the Father for us in and through the cross. And this way to the, the Father, the spark of hope, this relationship um, that Jesus opens up for us uh, very obviously, um, offers us a way out of the past, a way from the chaos and mayhem of life as we may have known it, um, without God in it. We have a way out. Isn't that great? Now this saving action um, of God, if you like, comes with a little bit of a surprise. He, um, in order to be saved, we don't have to um, give all our money. We don't have to um, do anything really other than to have a change of heart towards God. We have to want to uh, move away from the things of the past or the ways of old. Uh, and that moving away and that turning away is, is known as repentance. That's all, that's all that God asks. Last week we heard Jesus give a warning to Israel that a, that a great crisis was coming in which the, um, the failure of Israel, if you like, um, to be obedient to God's ways would lead them to um, a destructive path, that destruction would come their way and that would have disastrous results. That if they did not turn away from the way that they had been or that they were acting or the way that they were being, their city um, and their temple would be destroyed by the Romans. Israel was very well aware that at some point in their history, God would act. He would make known a saving action towards them and that they would know that God was, was, was um, presenting that opportunity, that saving action was about to become real because he would offer them a sign. A sign. Now, imagine you're asleep and you're dreaming. You know those moments when the door bangs and you, you wake up. You're dreaming. Suddenly there's a, a, a bright light shining in your face, waking you up from your sleep. A, a voice breaks into your dream wheel shouting, wake up! And this is the most important day of your life. Wake up. And then this person takes a bucket of cold ice water and throws it all over your face. Wake up. Wake up. In lots of ways, this is how John the Baptist's ministry uh, is portrayed in the Bible. It's bursting into history with power and energy, surprising everybody. And, and the surprise is because the Jewish people, they were looking for a, a sign from God, all right. But the key... Um, thing is here is that they didn't expect it to look like this, like John the Baptist. Um, they wanted a, a leader, a king, uh, who would lead them uh, against the Romans and defeat them. They weren't uh, anticipating uh, a prophet, a man uh, dressed in a hair shirt, eating locusts and honey and, and shouting at the top of his voice for them to come and repent and be baptised uh, in the river. Some people thought John was mad, and probably rightly so by the way he was coming across um, that it was him who was dreaming, John was dreaming, that he was telling them to wake up um, for the greatest moment of their history, but they just didn't believe it. Every year at Passover, the Jewish people uh, recited uh, and still recite the story of Exodus from Egypt. And they tell the story over and over of how God rescued Israel from Pharaoh, from slavery. They, the people are, uh, uh, are released from, from slavery. Um, bringing them to uh, the Red Sea, across the wilderness, to their promised land. This is the story of God rescuing Israel. Along with the creation story, it's the most important story in the whole Old Testament. And those who were hearing John uh, telling stories of, um, of being rescued um, from darkness and despair, uh, they would have known this story uh, very well. 
But instead of simply hearing the words, uh, John the Baptist was doing something else. He was inviting them to actually take part in this story as if it was a real live drama. He's telling the people that they are actually the cast in the story, that they were to actually come physically to the water, to the Jordan, to be baptized and be set free in and through that action. They were to leave behind things of old, leave behind Egypt, leave behind the world in which the, the, they had been living and the ways that they had been living. He was saying that they, the, the Israel of the day, were looking and going in the wrong direction. And here was an opportunity. Um, he felt that he was offering them the opportunity to go in the right direction. And all they had to do was repent. And really repentance, as, as I said, is, is simply deciding in your heart to move away from the ways of old into something new. Someone was coming, John says. Someone is coming very soon. And John was uh, attempting to get people ready. Who John thought that someone was isn't clear. But what we do know is that what John was doing with water, baptizing in water, the one that he was talking about, the person that he was talking about was on his way. This person would be doing with the Holy Spirit. What John was, was doing with water, this person that was coming, he would be doing something similar with the power of the Holy Spirit. And this comes as a promise to the people. One of the great promises that Israel had uh, cherished for centuries was that um, God would make the Exodus story, this, this release from slavery, he would make it happen all over again. He would set people free once and for all um, this time. And that this would be a time when he would come and live personally with his people. God would be with them. He would be their God and they would be his people. In the original Exodus story, God's presence uh, lived with Israel in, in uh, a pillar of cloud and fire. And this time it was going to be similar, but, but very different. God's spirit would live with people, in people, becoming the air they, that we breathe, becoming the fire in our hearts. And this is the promise that they had lived on. John is saying that the promise is about to be fulfilled, that God is coming, is going to be living with them, to be with them, to be the air that they, they breathe, to be the, the beating of their hearts and the fire um, needed in their hearts to live life as promised. But are they ready for it? No, they're not. And it raises the question for us too. Are we asleep? Do we need that loud voice in a bucket of ice cold water thrown over us to wake up? Um, do we need that in our churches, in our communities, in, in our lives, in our families' lives? What would it take for us to wake up? What kind of shock or surprise um, do we need to experience? What do we need to pull us out of our slumber that will make us turn away from our wrongdoings? What would it take to make us stop to give up our old ways? What would it take to, to happen? What would, it, what would it take to put everything down and to bring our whole lives into the light? What would it take for us to stop pretending? What would it take for us to be real, to say that we can't really do life on our own, that we need more, we need help? There is hope of a new life. It's a promise in the Bible. John says, repent. Turn away, be baptized, come to the water. Jesus offers the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, repent, be baptized, and then follow me. We need the Spirit to give us a little prompt sometimes. We need 
God's spirit in us to bring us into that place of change. And the world needs a, a revolution of the spirit if it's to turn around, to repent, to walk away from its ways that aren't good. For the world to turn its eyes back and look to, to the creator, God who created it, and to say, I'm sorry for my wicked ways, for the bad things that I have done. Repent, turn away. An act of the heart is all it takes. Imagine if every human being on the planet turned away and, and said sorry for the bad things that they had done and received the love of God and the freedom that there is in life in the Holy Spirit. Imagine if the world said sorry, turned away, looked up to God, received forgiveness, realized that they were truly free and able to receive the love of the Father that has created them. Imagine what would happen on our planet Earth if we all asked to receive the love of God. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day Tikanga Tēora Iti ahora kwe roto ihi Te pori Kia puta ke tau tamako Ihu karaiti Hei pou toko manoa mo te ao kokwe tonu Te atua Ko kwe te he he Wai wa tapu Ko kwe ta haku Ra ka Ko kwe ta haku Toko toko ko kwe tako ranga akawe ko kwe tanura te atua kororia. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. We pray for one another, 
for our families and friends, through whom we learn to love and to be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbours and our community, loving others as he loves us. We thank you for the unfailing love you hold out to everyone in Jesus Christ. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. Give them courage and hope in their distress, and bless those who minister to them. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation and the rich heritage of these islands. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those in authority among us and to all leaders of the nations. We pray for your church throughout the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love, that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. Merciful God, you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the prayers of your people, we pray. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Kia ino tātou. E hoa tohungia mātou. E te karaiti to hongi a mātou, e hoa to hongi a mātou. E tō mātou matou i te rangi, ki a tapu tau ingoa, ki a tai mai tau rangatiratanga, ki a mea tia tau e pai ai ki runga ki te penua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi, o mai ki a mātou ai anei he taro mā mātou mō tēnei rā. Muro mato hara, me mato hoki e muru nei o te honge hara na ki a mato. A hoki mato e kawia ka pakawaia, e ngari pakorangia mato i te kino. Na hoki tarangatiratanga te kaha me te kororia. Ake, ake, ake. Ave. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. I pray the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and evermore. And may God's gracious, enabling, comforting and empowering Spirit be your strength and be your guide as life brings its twists and turns. Blessings to you. 
Amen. Oh, I am small, my God, my all. You work great things in me. And your mercy shall last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. Shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day Bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn.